Welcome to my channel Dr. Munshi Nasser Skill Tone. How are you my dear learners? In this video we are going to talk about how to write systematic literature review. There are some techniques that we can use for publication in a Scopus Index or High Impact Factor Journal and we will talk about those techniques in a brief way. So let's get started. The first technique that we are going to talk about, let us talk about a sample paper Commercialization of Biofuel Products, a Systematic Literature Review, which is published in Renewable Energy Focus in 2023. As you can see, it's a LCBR journal, which is a Scopus journal. And of course, you can see the structure and everything is well designed and it is a published from a very good journal. Now, in this particular case, you can see there is an abstract nicely driven and then if you go down, you will see that there are few questions like how is commercialization conceptualized within the context of biofuels products, what ant antecedents currently define the commercialization of biofuel products. So as you can see that the main purpose of this study is to answering the following research question. So it is the first step for any systematic literature review in order to find out what type of questions or research directions for future researchers you are going to search or find through your investigation of systematic literature review. This is very very important. The second step here is to design the methodology and in order to do the methodology there is a common way to do the methodology. The common way of doing the methodology is to inclusion and exclusion criteria. In this research article, you can see that first you have to select the databases like for example, Science Direct, Google Scholar and Dimensions. You can add other sources if you want. Now there are some keywords that you need to pick and there is a time period for your inclusion criteria. As you can see here that the population of 17,953 publications comes once you add the title of this study. Among them, there are total publications filtered 86 which meet the criteria of 2010 to 2021 and the keywords and title and abstract. According to that you will come out and drop down to the systematic content analysis where you will proceed your results in discussion. So this is a common way of inclusion and exclusion criteria which is a very important part of your systematic literature review and it is must be added in your methodology. The third important point that I am going to share here is that the paper should discuss about a thematic analysis. For instance, in this particular case, we have few research questions, right? And each research question will address a theme and that theme will be consist of different type of research previously published. Now, as you can see here that the first table is here the status of research effort on the commercialization of biogas innovations. Now there are some innovations listed here from different regions, target goal, types of feedstock and authors. Likewise, if you go down, you will see that the table 2.A, status of research effort on the commercialization of bioethanol innovations. So this type of, under this theme, there are few innovations, regions and type of authors. So as you can see, each of these themes are separated or segregated under different tables and these tables are giving you a summary of what you are finding under that particular theme. And that is one of the important approach to summarize your literature that you are accumulating or doing for systematic literature review. That way you can give the readers a very interesting outcome or overview of a theme wise outcome or feedback of your research objective or questions. And this is what I would like to strongly recommend you to follow these three steps. Now recently I have published one of my paper which is in international trade politics and development. This is also a one of the top journal in this particular area. And this is a from Emerald publication and Scopus index and the web of science index. Our main idea is to transfer pricing practices in multinational corporations and their effects on developing countries tax revenue, a systematic literature review. Okay. You can see my name over here. Now, 
in this particular case you see the same way I have followed the way that I have showed you in other research article in some other publication in Elsevier. As you can see the following area are the research interest of the study. Now what are the various transfer pricing practices utilized by multinational corporations and how do they affect tax revenues in developing nations. Likewise I have listed down four of the research questions that I am going to investigate through my research. And that is a common approach for any systematic literature review. You must add a research interest or questions in your systematic literature review at the very beginning so that readers can understand that what kind of directions you are suggesting at the end of the literature review. Now after that the second point that I have said that the literature review should be divided under a thematic analysis right and of course before that you have inclusion and exclusion criteria which I have of course mentioned in our methodology. For example, here you can see based on the title and abstract relevant studies we search using keywords such as transfer pricing, tax avoidance, developing nations and profit shifting. The search did not include conference papers, master's thesis or doctorate dissertations. So you can see here that the inclusion and exclusion criteria are clearly identified. As well as you can see that our main project or database that we have downloaded our articles, Science Direct, Springer, Gesture, Willy, Taylor and Francis and other databases. So you can use this way in your methodology and this is a very common approach. Now the third important part as I said the thematic analysis and under different theme you have to design your literatures and that's why you can see here theme 1 impact of transfer pricing on tax revenues and base erosion. Theme 2, Theme 3, Theme 4 and under these themes or research interest I segregated my research findings or the accumulation of the papers in a tabular form. For instance here you can see that the authors methodology, finding, theoretical gap, empirical gap and problem. I strongly recommend you to create this type of table in your research systematic literature review writing so that a reader can understand very clearly what is the author's main idea, gap, empirical gap and the problem of the studies. And likewise I add all those themes that is under that table. For instance the theme 2 is showing effect of transfer pricing on MNC behavior and under this theme I segregated different type of authors, methodology, findings, theoretical gap, empirical gap and problem. So each theme will represent each theme will represent a bunch of studies and under those bunch of studies you will find a common problem or empirical gap which you will add, which you are identifying in order to show in your systematic literature review. And that is one of the important study design for systematic literature review. So I strongly recommend you to start doing first identify your research interest or your research question or objective at the very beginning then design the methodology based a common inclusion and exclusion criteria and after that you will find different type of themes based on your research question or research objective and summarize the all the downloaded articles that you have designed for your systematic literature review under those themes and separately design under different tables so that every table will give you some sort of common understanding or findings of themes that you are targeting. And that is how you can design your systematic literature review so that it can be guaranteed published in a Scopus Index or High Impact Factor Journal. And you can see here that the similar way I have tried and I publish in a very quality journal the same way I am suggesting you to do that. So it is a proof that this method is a acceptable method in a different publication houses so that if you try hopefully you can also publish in a Scopus or Oboe Web Science Journal from your multidisciplinary or your respective subjects systematic literature. I hope this video is useful for you and I strongly recommend before submitting your literature review or systematic literature review please find out the journal's aims and scope and follow the author guidelines strongly in order to accept your publications quickly in a Scopus Index journal. Thank you so much my dear learners. I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.